So I'd just like to welcome everyone. Uh, wish you a good morning, good uh, afternoon, and good evening. I noticed someone uh, said hi from Germany, so I realize it's uh, a little bit later there than it is here. Um, at the webinar, um, I think every every good project starts with a challenge, um, and so so we had a big one. Um, and basically, what we had the diagram to the right um, is an actual landscape diagram. Um, and that was the challenge that we were facing. So um, in our organization, we um, had many different um, business processes um, driven by system needs. And so basically how we had gotten to this point, um, not something I'm particularly proud of, but um, as most companies have, um, we operated in silos. Um, and so you can see those silos dictated in that, in that diagram there. And basically when someone came with an application request, the IT organization at the time would look at, you know, the requirements, look at the technology and make a decision. Um, then when another business unit would come with a, an IT request, we would make a separate decision and never really look holistically across the multiple applications. Um, so over the span of about 30 to 40 years, uh, this was eventually the, what the system landscape looked like. Um, and those purple lines between the different applications were the lines of communication. Um, so I dispersed throughout the organization. Um, we had to have many control checks to make sure that the data all harmonized together. Um, many systems, obviously, as you can see from the diagram, um, complex inter interactions. Uh, we had about 4,000 applications in total and 900 interfaces between those different applications. Um, I will note that that 4,000 application number um, included several thousand reports. Um, which were considered applications. Um, these applications were primarily legacy owned and built applications, um, many on, on very old um, and somewhat outdated technologies. Um, and then speaking of technologies, we had just about every technology um, over that 40 year span, you name it, we probably had it implemented. Um, so this is a challenge I, I think we were sort of an extreme case, um, but I think this is a challenge that many companies live with um, at some point or another in their, in their history. Um, so I don't, I don't think we're unique in the challenge. Maybe the extent of the challenge um, made it somewhat unique. Um, so I think this is hopefully something that, that everyone can relate to um, in terms of a challenge. So the next slide here is uh, our, our current versus desired state. So I think everyone wants, um, no one who's in that state wants to live there forever. Um, and our CEO at the time felt it was sort of a, his generational responsibility as someone who had been at the company for 30 years. He felt that um, we needed to fix the situation in order to move forward um, and really compete in the, in the next you know, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years um, as a corporation. So um, you saw the, the before, um, the after picture looks much cleaner. Uh, we use the model that I think is pretty common out there with um, systems of engagement, systems of insight, systems of record. Um, really, we wanted the process to be driven purely by the business needs, not the system limitations. Um, so that was a big change for our organization. It wasn't, you know, what, what should we do, but it was more of a question of what can we do given the current systems and the interfaces and, and the challenges and complexities that we have. Um, so that really turned the, uh, the equation on its head. Rationalized um, data based on a consistent data model. Um, so we didn't want to have millions of interfaces and control checks all throughout the organization. Um, we obviously were hoping for fewer systems <laughs> and uh, integration points between those systems. Uh, to move our technology strategy from something that was, you know, you check a box for everything um, that was available into something that was more coherent. Um, and so we chose SAP and Microsoft um, as the two vendors that we were going to focus on and the two platforms that we wanted to become best in breed on. Um, and instead of legacy owned built apps that we had created, we were looking for rented apps that someone else was responsible for maintaining um, and we wanted to keep those up to date. So front, um, we were only successful in this project because we tried, we failed, and then we learned. Um, so 
I think one benefit that we had is we had some pretty big failures along the way um, in trying to do uh, this project in particular or similar projects over a span of about 10 to 12 years. Um, and the good news was, you know, although they were failures, although they cost us money, we learned from those failures. Um, so I think that's a key thing. I think just about every company has had project failures. It's pretty common, um, especially when you look at the scope of what we were trying to accomplish. I think failure is not quite inevitable, but failure is somewhat likely. Um, so the, some of the key things that we took from those failures, um, the first was that executive and stakeholder buy-in um, was critical. Um, and even more importantly was the focus of those individuals as well. So it's one thing to sort of say, I agree with the project, that sounds like a great idea. Um, it's another thing to be, really be actively engaged in that project or program the whole way through. Um, so that was a key point that, that we marked. The thing was, given the magnitude of what we were doing, we didn't think it would be realistic to have people do this as sort of a part-time job wearing other responsibilities and hats at the same time. Um, so that was one of the big reasons for failures earlier were, um, was that people had their day job and they were doing this as a sort of an extra credit activity. Um, and we really looked and said as much as possible, we really need this to be a full-time focus. Um, and we even carved out um, a piece of the organization in order to do this, um, to do this program. We also knew that we needed realistic costs and had to have those costs be accurate. So we couldn't afford you know, a 20%, 40%, 50% overage um, on those costs. This represented a very significant um, investment at the time, um, and it was the company was willing to commit that, but couldn't commit that you know, times one and a half. Um, so that was a very important thing. We also knew we had to partner um, with vendors who could not just create software, but who could execute projects and programs. Um, so many vendors have you know, very successful software platforms, um, but the key for us was really could they implement them. So we, we looked a lot at um, previous success stories as well as previous failures um, from the various vendors and reaching out to customer references um, and a couple different data points to really understand how successful you know, the companies were, how they managed projects, what were, the, you know, what were their lessons learned um, in executing these projects throughout the years. So the other things, I think probably everyone has been burned by this, um, but systems that looked great in demonstrations didn't really work um, in our world and with our data specifically. Um, so we wanted to take some time, look at things, but also look at it from our company's perspective. Does this work for us? Um, and then one final thing was we knew that testing couldn't wait um, until the end of the project. So we really felt it was important and, and even more so really critical um, that we saw some testing early to make sure we didn't go down a road for a year and a half only to discover uh, it wasn't going to work for us. Um, with those in the back of our mind, we started the vendor evaluation and decisions. Um, so in terms of engagement, we engage the heads of business units um, as a steering committee. Um, we invested significant time, so this is a year and a half, to align the business units and stakeholders. So these were organizations that, although reporting up into the same CEO and the same corporate entity, really ran in silos. Um, so it took a while to get everyone aligned um, and agree on the main, uh, the main guiding principles for this program. Um, I will say, so the one and a half years, you know, if you're looking at a much smaller project, that makes sense. Just to give a, a scale of the project, um, when it was initially pitched, we were looking at an eight and a quarter year, $450 million program. Um, so that's why we were able to invest, you know, that year and a half. Um, obviously, that will scale based on the size of your project or program, but I think one key thing is it does make sense to invest some time. And so, Building those relationships over that year and a half really helped us to be successful. It really put everyone in the same um, position where they wanted this project to be a success. 